Hello, welcome. I'm Chris Slater, retired F-16 pilot turned UAP investigating YouTuber. I'm very excited today to have Richard Hoff on the channel. He's starting Sky360. It's the follow-on program to Skyhub. Skype was closed and we had to open up a new organization. We call it Sky360. Yes, yeah, Sky360. Let's see it here. Cool. So this is it, right? This is your, is it a company? What, what would you call this, Richard? It's an association. Um, okay. The difference to a company, it's um, per se an MPO. You, you don't make profit here. Okay. So you, you, you have to keep your books, but by the end of the year, the books have to be on zero. So whatever okay. you get in, you have to spend during the year. So basically, it's a not, not for profit organization. Not for profit. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, and it's excellent. built from members and voted from members. It's a community thing. But we need this organization because, you know, you need a bank account for many transfer because we have to buy hardware and test this hardware. So there's, uh, you, you scroll up the hardware list. Yeah, that's just, that's just yeah. one of, uh, of our tools. This is a very important list, the uh, curated list of hardware where you, you saw the, the, the schematic before for this station, for UAP tracking station. And yes. this this parts this equipment is listed in this curated list of hardware what you also see is that this list comprises only mostly only amazon available stuff uh, i see these stuff the curated list of hardware yeah so this it's is not, hardware you your team recommends or you're dev you're designing the software for this hardware or both i guess uh, yeah both sides um we recommend this because it's available it's um uh, cost efficient and it is tested, so that's why we can we can uh, recommend this hardware here because it's. And you all mentioned tested. Amazon; it's world uh, worldwide, essentially. Yeah, that's one of the issues because we fathom a network, a global UAP tracking network. We want to see our final goal is one hundred fifty thousand sensors stations, one hundred fifty thousand yes. stations. Then we have a very dense mesh network to cover the whole planet so that nothing whatever comes in or goes out uh goes unattended yes nothing perfect uh so they have to be very good in their cloaking technology <laughs> yes to evade us i love it you know put push to test you know that's our biggest thing right now is we can't get uh, there's not enough evidence you know everybody's like if, we, if yeah. only i had more evidence i could determine yeah. So that's, what, that's, that's why I'm, I love this. I love this program. That's the thing why we, we focus first on uh, optics, on visual data, because we need, I mean, Avi Loeb even said it, people need high megapixel pics mm -hmm. or videos of UAPs to recognize yes. as such and, and to accept the, the reality of it. So actually... <laughs> We did this before we <laughs> came up with it, and um, where we said we have to, fir to focus first on, on visuals, on optics, to get optical data, because that will persuade the people much more easily. If you take um, a waterfall spectrogram of um, an SDR of a passive radar plot, you can't recognize anything. It doesn't make sense to any people. And even if you draw something over it and, and explain why it is and, and this and that, people wouldn't understand. It's much more easy to understand pictures. It's exactly. Um, and this is your the system schematic here, right? This is, um, yeah. I guess, Richard, do you have that, that, that video you showed of the actual 3D system? You uh, that's a transparent view of, oh, of a station. What you see uh, is the box where all the equipment is is put in. And then you have uh, all the sensors reaching out, which is the cameras, the hemispheric cameras and the scope camera, and also these mounting points for uh, radar antennas and so forth. And all this other uh, sensor equipment is inside this box. Um, and that's the, the point to zoom, right? So you guys are still, you, you mentioned yeah. a little bit on the security cameras that would be give the initial point out, um, but that is, and they would give the point out to the point to zoom cameras, correct? Yeah. 
that's the basic idea. So you need something to scan the whole hemisphere on the 24 seven, because you never know when things happen. And this material, the fissure material, it looks funny. I can show you some pics if you want to how, how it sure. looks like. Something like that. Hmm. So that you don't see much movement, anything. I mean, the clouds move, but very slowly. Um, sometimes you see birds or planes flying over or even insects. We saw drones. We saw meteors, huh. um, shooting stars. Um, we have some found some things we cannot explain because of the non-ballistic flight maneuvers. Hmm. Uh, lights that suddenly pop up, um, stand still, and then suddenly start moving, and cool. then suddenly start stopping again. But can we get data? You know, could you get data? Now, you mentioned there's already some streams running. Do, do you have any links to these streams that maybe we can check out? Um, yeah, you can go to, uh, to YouTube, um, UAP at Home, which is Paul in France. Oh, yeah, you've got it here. So he's got uh, a quite a nice setup. Cool. So this is in France, right? Through Skyhub? He is in France. Um, he was one of the, the Skyhub team members. Uh, when Skyhub closed down, he just stepped back for a while. He will come back, I'm sure, because he is still building his, his equipment. What you see here are two cameras the, on the left and the right normal cameras, um, zoomed cameras, and here's a hemispheric camera. Um, this is the Stellarium, where you see from the same point of view, you see where the stars are, which you can see because it's daylight. Cool. And then here is the, here's the waterfall for the SDR. SDR, what, what is that? I'm sorry. Uh, Software defined radio. Okay. Where you have, um, you know, you're familiar with, with radar, you're familiar because you're a pilot. Yes. Uh, passive radar is not emitting um, radar pings, but uses already existing stations emitting radar signals hmm. and knowing about it and recognizing reflections of such uh, emissions and yes. can recalculate the, 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 the reflection path so, for example, you have a station somewhere, let's say in Portugal, and in Lisbon, there's a big um, beacon of, let's say, TV station sending out a, a digital signal, but it's a strong emitter, and it's 24-7 emitting. Um, when you're at home, uh, your station can recognize where it is, uh, what the signal is, how strong it is, which frequency and everything. But this emission of uh, the signal from this TV station is also reflected, let's say, by a plane flying over, passing over. Hmm. So with your station locally, you see not only the, emi the emission, the, the beacon itself, the TV station, but you also see a reflection moving across the sky. Hmm. And, yeah, this yeah. is. I remember this is obviously very useful in a military uh, you know, environment because you're not emitting. Yeah. So this is silent. From what I understand is that it's, it's difficult to actually get good, get good data from this, you know, to actually get point out data. Have you guys had success with this passive radar? Um, success is a good word. Um, it's yes. still under development. Uh, there are yes. some people, some very good people like Bob McGuire working on it, you know, science Bob, he's working on an SDR and, He's actually one of the co-developers on this planet for SDR. So the idea is to have a setup which is small enough that it fits either in a closure or have some mm -hmm. antennas close by. You don't want 20 meter antennas and you, you can't put this in your garden. You can't even afford it. So the idea is to have a small devices, small antennas. And there's one product, it's called the Kerberos SDR, Kerberos mm -hmm. SDR which has a four channel um, scanning electronics inside. Uh, you can hook on four antennas on it. And the nice thing is um, that you can uh, triangulate with it. So you get four signals in 
Hmm. And by the diff the difference, the, the, the shifts, maybe Doppler shifts even, you can recognize movement, speed, direction, shape, yeah. uh, size, maybe. Glad you're doing this, man. Um yeah, thank you. Thank you for doing yeah, it. Yeah, thank you for your initiative to, to bring up sensors into the orbit. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no one did it yet besides military yeah. and scientific. That's the problem, right? Efforts. That's the biggest thing. I mean, the biggest thing you mentioned is we just we don't have enough evidence. And the evidence that 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 does exist, okay, we don't know, is supposedly just locked up in government computers somewhere, government yep. servers. Yep. Um, so we can't study it. Whereas yep. now, like you mentioned, you know, we have the technology now. We have the technology. Uh, we can we can start making these systems. And and the STEM, you know, I didn't I didn't consider that for these schools. Like that STEM project uh, is so cool. So so many different ways to go with it. Um, yeah, absolutely. And and yeah. there's a paradigm shift as well, not only in the UAP world, but also in 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 uh, possession of data. Hmm. Up to now, it's old school that anything that is created. The data that is created stoned. is belonged as the stone wall. No, but it's mm -hmm. my data, yeah. Yes. And we we now see there's a there's a there's a shift. It it started with let's say 20 years ago with the open source software. Yes. More or less, but we also see it in the data. The data has to be in the future. Modern new data of today of the 21st century has to be open to anyone. Open so source. that anyone can 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 work their brains around what it means the data and and doing some warehousing, but most of the the old schools uh, they are sitting on it as we own it we created it and that's why we want to yeah, make money from it yeah stonewalling yeah. it yeah yeah I love this you know because um I you know I'm not in it for the money you know I guess people can always say that and of course I want you know I'm an investor I invest in crypto obviously. Um, so I do, I do try and make money, uh, but I love how there's so many of us like-minded that just really want to know and are just focused on building these systems, open source, you know, get the information, get the information out there, man. It's so, so exciting. Um, it's the only way it can work. I mean, we have 70 years of denial. It hasn't worked. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's 70 years. It's done. Yeah. The apes. <laughs> 70 years. Okay, it's, any it's, last points you want to give, Richard? Uh, <laughs> we already kind of mentioned your website. Uh, are you anywhere else? Um, uh, I'd Discord? like to encourage people to 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 join us on our Discord channels, to go to the 360.org uh, website and find the Discord channel links and start discussing with us and maybe start doing uh, developing their hubs, maybe finding friends and share a station together, share the, the, the costs of it together. So let's say... If in a, in a small village, uh, three friends share one station. I mean, if it's a small village, it doesn't make sense to have three stations there. So <laughs> sharing makes sense. Yeah, and why not get out there and do something? You know, so many people spend, they spend so much of their time, so much of their lives, like watching other people play sports, you know, or I, I always harp on sports, but, uh, you know, just watching TV or TV episodes, you know, what, and then we, 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 we complain about, oh, no one's learning stem cell, you know, or yeah. stem, stem is uh, stem cell stem is, uh, is it's underrepresented in our society. You know, why aren't these yeah. young kids learning stem? And my question is, why aren't you learning stem? <laughs> you know, why yeah. don't you get out there? Uh, you know, your kids, they're going to learn whatever you do. You know, you can tell your kids whatever you want. Um, yeah. But the more it's, people that are out there it's, doing it's something. It's a nice uh, parents, kids thing. They can do it together in a family. Absolutely. It's not that complicated. No. It's mostly it's plug and play. And the software is just download, install. So the entry level is quite low. But you can you can expand to higher levels if you want. But the entry level is quite low. So Excellent. a father-daughter so father sure. thing. <laughs> I'll make sure to put uh, the uh, those links you mentioned. So the Discord yep. link, uh, the Sky360 uh, website's pretty easy to find. But I'll put all uh, I'll put those links in the description. And again, thanks again, thanks again, Richard, for being here. Thanks for your time. Thanks for being out there doing this, man. Thanks um, for having me, and yeah. thanks for for doing your thing. And uh, I really keep me in the loop uh, with your project, please. It's it's very. I think it's a good complementary thing. 
we are looking upwards, you are looking downwards. Yeah, it's excellent. I yeah, think it's 100%. a great combination. Awesome, man. Um, so thanks to everyone for Good watching. Um, thanks again. Uh, thanks to all my uh, my Patreons. Love you guys. Uh, and write in the comments. So I'll, I'll continue to uh, reply to the comments. And then please go to the please go to Sky360 website. Please get involved, man. We need we need people involved. So that's it, guys. Yes, we thanks need. for being here. All right. Bye, bye, Chris. Take care. All right. See you, Richard. See you. See you.